the artist we're talking about today is Andy Warhol. The title of this piece is Campbell's Soup Can. Don't forget to put that in quotation marks. The medium is an oil painting. The element that's most important for this piece, there's just one this time, and that is color. You can see here that he's using a very vivid, bright, primary red as his main color, and then most everything else is just black and white. So that really draws your eye to the piece and is very bright. The principles that are most important for this piece are balance, and contrast. For balance, yet again, if we took some scissors and cut this piece straight down the center, up and down, it's pretty symmetrical. Not exactly because of the different words on the label, but it is visually evenly balanced otherwise. When we're talking about contrast, here we have, again, that very bright white, the very dark black, and then this 50%, which is the red, which is very intense. And Andy Warhol's work is described as high contrast, and his style was very much where he would remove a lot of the tones in between. So you'd have your 0% and your 100%, or maybe 0, 50, and 100. So he's reducing the level of value within the piece to flatten it out almost in some ways like a cartoon or an illustration. The mood for this piece is neutral. We're not really looking at this and feeling happy or sad or angry. It's just a can of soup, so a neutral mood. The genre for this piece is pop art, and that's down in the bottom right of the slide here. Pop is short for popular. What the pop artists were doing was trying to create artwork that showed and talked about popular culture at the time. Andy Warhol was born in 1928 and died in 1987. This piece, Campbell's Soup Can, was made in 1962, and Warhol actually made an entire series of this work. So this is the Campbell's Soup Suite. And one thing that Warhol wanted to do was take an object that could be found in any home in America and was very well-known, very common, very popular. And with the Campbell's Soup Suite, I think it's really funny because he did the labels for each different kind of soup that Campbell's had at that time. And these were even arranged in the same way that you would see them set up on the shelves in a grocery store. So he's trying to take these everyday objects that we see when we're walking down the grocery aisle and bring those into a gallery and show it as something that is important or something that we should be paying attention to. Pop art wanted to be an anti-art movement. They wanted to make work on purpose that people would hate or just not get. And instead, people ate it up and absolutely loved it. So they ended up creating something super popular, which is in the name as well. And they were wanting to make commentary on popular culture at the time as being frivolous. And why is it that we obsess over one thing or one person versus another? But especially because it was talking about popular culture. People really liked that because we like popular culture as a society. This piece on the left, Marilyn Diptych. A diptych is a piece of artwork that has two parts. So on this one, the left is in bright color and it is a portrait of Marilyn Monroe, again done in that very high contrast style. So he's flattened it out by taking the most extreme of the values. So you've got your 0% 50% and 100%. And each of these is a screen print. So he's taking the same thing and making it multiple times by using a screen printing process. And then on the right, we have the same visual, the same print and the same screen, but there's no color. And also what he is using is called a ghost print. So the ones on the very far left are the strongest visual. And as they print again and again towards the right, it gets less and less ink as it's being printed. So if you've ever had a stamp where 
where you put it on the ink pad and then made a stamp on your paper and you didn't go back to get more ink, you just kept stamping, you'll notice it gets lighter and lighter each time. Now, not only does this piece look really cool, and Marilyn Monroe was very popular at that time, but what this is also giving commentary on is that the more we repeat a person, the more we talk about them, the more they become famous, the less of a person they actually become at that point. So Marilyn Monroe is like any other human being, but because she was this famous actress and everybody knew her name and everybody thought that she was beautiful and talented and so wonderful, she becomes less of a person and more of this famous entity so she loses that personhood and that's one thing that is being shown here in those prints becoming less and less distinct the piece on the right banana is actually an album cover that he created for the velvet underground and this was really kind of funny and tongue-in-cheek he put up at the very top it's a little hard to see in the slide but if you we're able to zoom in. Up at the top, there's the arrow and it says, peel slowly and see. And of course, all of us, I would imagine, know how to open a banana. You know what part you peel and what the point of peeling a banana is. But it just was very silly for him to put that wording there as well. On the left, we have Double Elvis, which again was done with a printmaking process and also talking about how we have this duality of Elvis the person and Elvis the famous being. So he's just being repeated, his music, his name, his being is repeated again and again whenever he is performing or putting out a new album or being listened to on the radio. The piece on the right, Brillo Soap Pads Boxes, is another product that you would be able to find in almost any home in America at the time. It's a, a cleaning product and this is the packaging. And you probably would see in stores at this time these boxes stacked like this or maybe in a similar way in a display so that way people would be able to easily find it. Like how sometimes you'll see these pyramids of product or whenever something like the Super Bowl is happening you'll see 12 packs of soda stacked in a way that is reminiscent of a stadium or the goalposts at the end zone. Andy Warhol's studio was named Studio 54 and it was in New York City. Studio 54 was a center of artistic expression and trends. And Warhol helped launch the careers of other artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat, who was also a painter, and Twiggy, who was a model. 